exercises 5. So now we are going to start solving exercises on trigonometric functions. So let's see the first one. Here we have a circle of radius 10 meter. On this circle there is an arc, a circular arc, a portion of the circle that subtends some angle at the center and that angle measurement is given once in radians and once in degrees. The values are of course different. So these are two different cases. We have to find how long the circular arc should be. What is the length of the circular arc that we have to find. So we already know the relationship among these uh, three things. One is the radius of the circle. The other is the length of the circular arc. And the third one is the radian measure of the angle that the circular arc subtends at the center. So we are going to use this relation to find the length of the circular arc. So let's see the solution. So there are two parts in part A. We are given R, which is the radius of the circle that is given to be 10 meter. So R is 10 and the radian measure of the angle is 4 pi divided by 5. So the length s of the circular arc that subtends this angle theta at the center of the circle is s equal to r theta. This is the relationship that we know that is true among this that links these three things. So r is 10 and our angle is 4 pi divided by 5 so this is 8 pi meter the unit is meter so that's space meter so the circular arc should be of length 8 pi meter in order for it to be subtending this uh, precise angle at the center of a circle whose radius is 10 meter Next part B. In part B also we are given an angle but uh, here it is given in degrees. We have to keep in mind that this relationship S equal to R theta is only applicable when theta is measured in radian. So that means we have to convert the degree measure into radian measure before we use this relation. That we will of course do here itself B. We are given in this case R of course stays the same 10 and Theta equal to, because we are writing theta here in this relationship, so we should actually write the radian measure here itself because we are going to write that theta here. If we just simply write the degree measure here, then we cannot use that theta in this formula because then it is not true. It should be in radian. 
so that means this is going to be 110 multiplied by pi divided by 180 so that is 11 pi divided by 18 radians well if we, if we want we may choose to not write the radian answer because uh, that convention is there now if the angle is measured in degrees then we have to explicitly uh, show the unit but if we do not write anything and we are saying this is an angle that means it's in radians so and the rest is same so i just simply use ellipses is that means the length of our circular arc is s equal to again r theta 10 times 11 pi divided by 18 so if we do a little cancellation that will uh, that is possible here so the final thing i mean if we uh, cancel out the common factor 2 from the numerator in denominator then we will have 5 in the numerator so that means 55 pi divided by 9 meter meter is still meter so it stays meter so that ends the solution then the second one is also similar a central angle in a circle of radius 8 a central angle in a circle of radius 8 no unit is given here but it's uh, i mean in some uh, scale in some unit it is 8 is subtended by an arc by an arc whose length is given. So we assumed that in whatever unit we are measuring the radius and it is 8, we are also using that same uh, length, unit of length to measure the length of this circular arc and that is 10 pi in that unit. Find the angles, radian and degree measures. Find. the angles radian and degree measures so there is an uh, i mean in a circle of uh, radius 8 there is a central uh, i mean a circular arc which is subtending some angle and so that means in this case r and s are given we have to find theta we are given r equal to 8 and s equal to 10 pi so the central angle theta is 
theta equal to s divided by r because s is r theta equal to so this time because we are just directly writing the angle that means we are finding its radial measure then we have to do um, something extra to find it uh, to convert it into degrees so this is 10 pi divided by 8 that means 5 pi divided by 4 and even if you don't write radian explicitly this just means radian because you haven't uh, written any unit so that's just it that is the first thing so the central angle is of this measurement 5 pi divided by 4 radians in degrees this angle the same thing is is I need ink but let me just finish this first 5 pi divided by 4 times 180 divided by 5 degrees so that will give us what pi and pi will cancel out um, 180 divided by 4 is 45 and 45 times 5 is 225 225 degree okay, let me just uh, refill and then we will continue So here the solution to the second one ends. Then the third one, this one needs calculator. So it's it has this calculator tag. you want to make an 80 degree angle you want to make an 80 degree angle by making an arc on the perimeter of a 12 inch diameter circle disc okay and drawing lines so the situation is just that same thing but the, the language is a little different from the ends of the arc to the disc's center
to the nearest tenth of an inch how long should the arc be That means it's just this. This is our uh, circular disk and we want to make an 80 degree angle by making an arc on the perimeter of the of a 12 inch diameter disk. That means 12 inches the diameter so the radius is 6 inches and the central angle is 80 degree we want this s this length let the length of the circular arc that subtends once again because we are writing a solution so let's just write it nicely let the length of the circular arc that subtends an angle of 80 degrees at the center of a 12 inch diameter disk B S Oh, because the, uh, the unit is given, so let's just, uh, it has also to be in inches, S inches, then we have, okay, so we want S, so just like before, S equal to R theta. This time around we are not even mentioning what R is because uh, you understand in the context of the exercises that we are solving in this set of exercises R means radius and theta is our central angle. So R is 6 inches times theta but theta is given in degrees it has to be converted into radians before we write it here. So that means 80 times pi divided by 180. Now, normally we would just simply cancel out common factors and uh, keep the answer somewhat like this, inches, whatever that ultimately turns out to be. But we have to actually calculate the value. I mean, we have to express it in decimals and that too, to the nearest tenth of an inch. That means only one, uh, Des, I mean after the decimal point only one digit we need only that much accuracy so that that's where we need to use our calculator and it turns out to be equal to I have the answer here 
inches actually it becomes 8.337 something inches but uh, 337 or I think 377 that's why in place of that 3 we are uh, writing for we are rounding things up like this 8.4 inches so that is our answer you should understand that uh, here it is of course not exactly equal to 8.4 because this is an irrational number due to the presence of this spine whereas 8.4 is a rational number they can never be equal but this is an approximation to the nearest tenth of an inch so if you want you can also uh, write like this inches approximately within parenthesis approximately and then it's okay and then there is another one like this for this one is also a calculator exercise if you roll a one meter diameter wheel forward thirty centimeter over level ground through what angle will the wheel turn Mm -hmm. So this time we have to again find angles. Angle, but in two, uh, in our two units, both radians and degrees. So here the language is again slightly different to make us uncomfortable with how it has been uh, said. But turning the wheel, actually if you really think about it, the wheel is here, there is the lowest point. Okay. And when you turn the hill, that lowest point will change. So I mean uh, when the hill is, uh, I mean sorry, what the hell am I saying, not hill, wheel. When the wheel is turning, that lowest point of course remains the lowest point, but that lowest point itself moves on the perimeter of the wheel, tracing an arc. So we are talking about that arc. So ultimately the situation is same. Over level ground, through what angle will the wheel turn? Through what angle will the wheel turn? And there is one more thing that uh, we may miss if we are careless. Here it is one meter diameter, whereas uh, the distance that the wheel travels, the linear distance, rectilinear distance is. 30 centimeter if we are not careful to make these two units the same then we will get the wrong answer so that thing is also there answer in radians to the nearest tenth just like before and also in degrees to the nearest degree also in 
increase to the nearest degree so that means when we calculate the degree value we just have to find that integer that positive integer which uh, the degree value will be we have to neglect all the whatever uh, comes after the decimal point if there are digits we have to neglect all of them and we have to only consider the integer part so that that's what means uh, the author means when he says to the nearest degree so again just like before one of course has to write the actual solution using all the language and everything which this time we are not going to do we are just simply going to uh, write the value so that means we uh, now we need the angle so first of all we are going to calculate the radian measure the angle in radian measure so theta is s divided by r okay so s is 30 centimeter so instead of uh, making this centimeter a meter which requires us to divide this by 100 let us make this meter centimeter one meter is 100 centimeters but that is diameter but we need radius so that means 50 centimeters so in the numerator we have 30 divided by 50 okay and in the denominator Oh, okay, what the hell am I saying? The numerator itself is 30 and the denominator is 50 because that is going to give me the angle. Uh, I'm also getting confused. 30 divided by 50 and that's just it. So this is, uh, this becomes 0 0.6 to the nearest tenth, let's say. 0 0.6 radians and in degrees let me write like this and in degrees that same theta is times 180 divided by pi this of course we can uh, not uh, do uh, just like this because pi is there we can of course do it uh, by hand but what is the need since we anyway have been asked to use calculator and if we do this by hand then we have to use some approximate value of pi maybe you will uh, use 3.14 but if you want to be more accurate you may use 3.14159 so that will make the calculation extremely hard to do by hand so that's why even when the you are using calculator that is also using an approximate value keep that in mind you see whatever computing device you are using whether it's a calculator or computer these devices don't know irrational numbers because when you express an irrational number uh, in uh, as a decimal expansion using decimal system then there are infinitely many digits after the decimal point and there is no pattern in which they are appearing so that uh, you may use that pattern to reduce the expression essentially into a finite expression involving finite symbols because of this no matter how many digits a computing machine uses to calculate something it is always an approximation if the thing that the machine is using is actually an irrational number okay so if when you are using calculator you may when you uh, press the button for pi you may uh, 
see something like this 3.14159265 and maybe even more it looks like okay the calculator is using the actual value of pi no that is physically impossible because that will require the calculator memory or computer memory whatever you are using to have infinitely many bits to record these digits that is physically impossible okay so whatever uh, the machine is using it's also approximate but it is i mean whatever we would be using in an actual calculation that will likely be 3.14 or at mo at best 3.1415 beyond which it will be uh, practically impossible for us to do by hand um, that is why it looks like uh, we are using an infinite string but that is not the case the machine can calculate extremely fast so that's why it can use many digits and still give you the answer in a very short time So the, in this case, if you after all the adjustments to the nearest degree, it comes out to be 34 degrees. So that is our answer. And here also we can write approximately. Actually, instead of simply writing approximately, we can uh, write more accurately this itself, this phrase. To the nearest degree within brackets that would be more appropriate but anyway so this is the solution next we have exercises based on evaluating trigonometric functions And we are now going to find out some values of trigonometric functions at some uh, known angles. Known angles are uh, angles which are easy to handle. So this is the fifth one. Complete the following table. Of function values. If the function is undefined, at an angle, at a given angle, enter u and d which uh, denotes the indicates the fact that there the function is undefined And uh, this is important. Do not use do not use calculators or tables. Okay. So 
so now some angles are given and uh, trigonometric functions are given ideally i should first of all write the empty table here and then in the solution i should again uh, write it and then uh, supply the missing values that of course i am not going to do i will just simply draw the table and then there itself we are going to put the values so there are okay let me just see how many rows and how many columns this one should have one two three four five six seven one two three four five six okay seven rows and six columns now six columns So these are our angles, okay, I should have, um, okay, somehow I will manage sin theta, I should have made these cells a little wider, cos theta, tan theta, then we have cotangent of theta, secant of theta, and cosecant of theta. I hope you can make out the first one is sine theta then followed by cos theta then tan theta then cot theta secant theta cosecant theta and now the angles the angles are minus pi all of them are in radians okay that is understood because no unit is given minus 2 pi divided by 3 then 0 then pi divided by 2 and finally 3 pi divided by 4 and we should not use calculator or any trigonometric tables so that means we are only allowed to use trigonometric identities that we have seen we have seen uh, a few so far and uh, the definitions of the trigonometric functions that is the one which involves a unit circle centered at the origin and that thing. Actually to distinguish between the trigonometric functions that we encounter for the first time whose definitions involve right angle triangles from uh, the functions that we have seen here which are actually extended versions of those old trigonometric functions to 
make this distinction these new ones are called circular functions because their definition involves a unit circle centered at the origin as opposed to a right angle triangle okay so that's why the, sometimes they are called circular functions when you hear these terms circular functions you should know that the general definition is being used not the restricted one where the angles uh, lie only in between 90 degree and 0 degree okay so let us now see what these things are actually going to be so to recall the definition we are again going to draw our unit circle which we previously also did many times uh, this is looking like an ellipse freehand drawing is something that i am really very bad at Anyway, just for the sake of our understanding, let me just assume that this is a very badly drawn circle, a unit circle. Centered at the origin. So this is our X axis. This is our Y axis because it is a unit circle. It has radius one. So the coordinates of these four points are respectively this 1 comma 0 0 comma 1 minus 1 comma 0 and 0 comma minus 1 and what is the definition of our uh, trigonometric functions the others come afterwards first of all we have sine and cos it is just simply this when you put your angle whatever that angle is in its standard position where the initial ray of the angle matches with the positive x axis that means the vertex of the angle is at the origin and the final ray after you uh, rotate it in uh, one of the two senses depending on the sign of the angle after that rotation is over wherever it lands say it lands here so this is the final ray of the angle that final ray intersects this unit circle at some point the x coordinate of that point is defined to be cos theta that's what cos theta means and the y coordinate is defined to be sin theta so that means the coordinates of this point are cos theta comma sin theta that that is the definition of cosine and sine and then the others of course are defined in terms of cosine and sine and that's just it and this is your angle theta which actually may not be just this much it uh, may be like this also after uh, many such rotations finally the uh, terminal line is like this or if our angle numerically is uh, I mean uh, in terms of value it, if it is negative then the rotation is clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise okay so let us now see so that means you can immediately see that uh, this should be by this definition cos 0 radian comma sine 0 radian so cos 0 radian is 1, sin 0 radian is 0. That's how we get the values. Cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. And uh, then like that, this is pi by 2 radians. So this point should have coordinates cos pi by 2 comma sin pi by 2. Actually, the coordinates are 0, 1. So that is why cos pi by 2 is 0 and sin pi by 2 is 1. And like that, the others also. So the others means, uh, let's now look at minus pi also because it's there. It's the first one. And, uh, oh, okay. So this is minus pi. So the rotation will be clockwise pi 
the value is pi but clockwise rotation so it is minus pi so here the initial uh, ray of the angle is like this but the final ray is this so this is our point where the final ray intersects our circle its coordinates are minus 1 and 0 so that's why cos pi radians is minus 1 and sin pi radians is 0 so that's how we get our uh, these two entries sin minus pi is 0 cos minus pi is minus 1 okay so because these two have been found others will now follow tan theta is sin theta divided by cos theta so 0 divided by minus 1 is 0 cot theta is the reciprocal of tan theta but reciprocal of 0 does not exist in the system of real numbers so that's why we write u and t undefined secant theta is the reciprocal of cos theta so reciprocal of minus 1 is again minus 1 and cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sin theta this one is also undefined in this case Okay, so using the definition of the trigonometric functions, we have found these values. Okay, now what about minus 2 pi by 3? If we want, we can use the definition here also, but it will be somewhat complicated to understand. Instead, in this case, let us use the trigonometric identities that we have already seen in the text towards the end of this uh, section. So, let us calculate sin minus 2 pi divided by 3 by observing that minus 2 pi divided by 3 actually is pi divided by 3 minus pi because uh, if you simplify this you will get minus 2 pi divided by 3 pi minus 3 pi becomes minus 2 pi now we use the formula for sin a plus b i think we uh, okay when we were discussing these uh, identities did i derive the identity for sin a minus b from the identity for uh, sin a plus b i think i did so we are going to directly use that thing here the formula for sin a minus b is sin a cos b minus cos a sin b note that unlike this somewhat strange looking angle minus 2 pi by 3 these individual angles are uh, nicer pi by 3 is something that we can handle we already know this very well in degrees it is 60 degrees and pi also we know it's 180 degrees so this is sin pi by 3 cos pi minus cos pi by 3 sin pi okay now let me write here itself because i don't have much space note one thing that this second term actually will not be there it will vanish why because sin pi is zero so this term becomes zero you don't even have to know what cos pi by 3 is although we know now what is sin pi by 3 that we already know from our uh, even from the restricted definition which uses only the right angle triangles sin 60 degrees is square root of 3 divided by 2 but here that should be multiplied by cos pi and from this one we know that cos pi is minus 1 so this is minus square root of 3 divided by 2 so that's how we get this value minus root 3 divided by 2 now in a similar manner we can find cos minus 2 pi by 3 also let's just do that we modify the things here itself but now we will need the identity for cos a minus b that also we know so 
so that cos a minus b identity or formula whatever you may want to call it is cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b so cos pi by 3 cos pi minus sin pi by 3 sin pi so just like before this second term does not survive means it vanishes now what is cos pi by 3 cos pi by 3 means cos 60 degrees that is 1 over 2 0 0.5 that is 1 over 2 and cos pi is still minus 1 so in this case the value is minus 1 over 2 so this is minus 1 over 2 now tan theta is sin theta divided by cos theta so that will give us 1 divided by square root of 3 no uh, okay no i think i made a mistake it's not one by root three it's just simply root three what i wrote here is not correct it's the reciprocal of this because this divided by this yes yeah, sorry about that square root of three in this case there is no problem calculating cot theta because this is a non-zero real number and this one will be one divided by square root of three Second theta is the reciprocal of cos theta, so this is minus 2, and cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta, that is minus 2 divided by square root of 3. Okay, 0 is a particularly easy angle, 0 radian is also equal to 0 degrees, sine 0 is known to be 0, or you can see from here also sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 so 0 this is 1 tan theta is sin theta divided by cos theta that is also 0 cot theta in this case is undefined secant theta is the reciprocal of cos theta 1 cosecant theta in this case is again undefined u and d okay then we come to pi by 2 which is a known angle these are also known angles but slightly more complicated than these ones minus pi and pi by 2 and 0. So for pi divided by 2 radians cos theta is 0 and sine theta is 1. So here the exact opposite behavior will be seen than this column. So in this case sine theta divided by cos theta is tan theta so tan theta is undefined. But cot theta is cos theta divided by sin theta that is 0. Secant theta in this case is undefined. Reciprocal of 0 cannot be found in the system of real numbers. And cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sin theta. So that is 1. Okay, I said this twice. No, reciprocal twice or in fact I think more than twice. Reciprocal of 0 is undefined in the system of real numbers keep that in mind there is a slightly larger system which uh, allows this actually it's not uh, i mean the quantity or the object that you know as infinity that is sometimes useful in some parts of mathematics and here in ordinary calculus this is our system of real numbers, no? set of real numbers particularly. These objects are outside of this system, but there is a system of extended real numbers where these objects are included, which is needed in some parts. Although we there we do not interpret this infinity as 1 over 0 in some cases it's interpreted like that but uh, usually the place where this 
system of extended real numbers is used there we do not interpret this as 1 over 0 but it is there okay so i just wanted to mention that now we have one more column 3 pi divided by 4 here also we are going to calculate like this so let's do the calculation since we actually no longer need the figure so let's just create some space and show our calculation more uh, clearly and in a less cluttered way okay so 3 pi divided by 4 sine 3 pi divided by 4 is sine pi minus pi divided by 4. There are of course ready-made identities for this type of things. Sine pi minus theta it turns out is actually sine theta. But I don't see any need to separately memorize these formulas. You just remember four formulas and in fact only two are enough. The formula or the identity for sine a plus b and the one for cos a plus b. And along with these things, these further identities sine minus a is minus sine a and cos minus a is cos a. If you use these things, then you very easily get the identities for sine a minus b and cos a minus b and that's enough for most of the applications whatever other formulas you will ever encounter that involve these basic trigonometric functions actually are derivable from this from the formulas for these things and it's really uh, not necessary to memorize these many formulas and later forget them instead you can just simply use the formula for sine a minus b here you know that sine pi is zero so you will get sine theta but now you don't have the risk of forgetting this formula and then uh, wondering okay so what sh should i read i mean sorry what should i write here so instead it's enough to know these formulas and how to derive these things from these formulas this way the derivations also will sit in your mind uh, more properly and you will never forget these things okay so we don't bother about such special formulas like sin 2 theta formula, sin 3 theta formula because we can quickly uh, derive them. If you are writing an examination and you are really uh, tight on time and you don't have much time to think about these things then maybe you can train yourself to remember those special formulas but in general it's not needed. So this is sin pi cos pi divided by 4 minus cos pi sin pi divided by 4. This term now is uh, it will vanish because sin pi radiance is 0 minus cos pi radiance is minus 1 we already saw this and sin pi by 4 radiance is 1 divided by root 2. So this is 1 divided by root 2. And uh, let's also calculate the cosine 1. So cos a minus b again like before. Cos a cos b plus sin a sin b
because we have sin pi here now the second term will vanish cos pi is minus 1 and cos pi by 4 is the same as sin pi by 4 so this is minus 1 over root 2 and that one oh that one is plus 1 over root 2 okay so sin 3 pi by 4 is 1 over root 2 cos 3 pi by 4 is minus 1 over root 2 tan 3 pi by 4 is sin 3 pi by 4 divided by cos 3 pi by 4 so this is minus 1 because we don't have any zero values so nothing will be undefined and cot is the reciprocal of tan so minus 1 second is the reciprocal of cos so minus root 2 cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so square root of 2 so that is the complete table now let me see uh, let me match this with uh, what i have here with me and see whether i uh, made any mistake or not 0 minus 1 0 undefined minus 1 undefined okay minus root 3 by 2 minus 1 over 2 root 3 1 over root 3 minus 2 minus 2 over root 3 fine the second column is okay then 0 1 0 undefined 1 undefined yes 1 0 undefined 0 undefined 1 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus root 2 root yes so that's it that is the table and uh, after this there is another one which uh, is exactly similar it also has these trigonometric functions but the angles are different so that we will do but in the next video next calculus video i urge you to actually uh, try these uh, exercises on your own and see if you can uh, get it okay so with that i end this uh, video so if you want to say something you can write the com in the comment section below or you can mail me at my usual address the link will be there in the description so that's just it for tonight and tomorrow uh, last uh, saturday what did we do um, i think we uh, went through galleon's ring theory exercises so tomorrow we are again going to go back to gregory lee's algebra exercises so that will be uh, that we will see tomorrow so i wrap things up here itself so see you tomorrow with at least algebra exercises until then this is me lucifer from a mathematical room have a nice day